everybody, this is Connor Lestoka, and this is 372 pages we'll never get back. I am joined by Mike Nelson, whose name I somehow managed to mispronounce after 18 years of knowing him on the first take of this introduction. Uh, it's really not a tough one either. That's the thing. Yours? Yeah. Oh. I'm sure yours is just destroyed. What's People the worst insert- pronunciation you've ever had? Uh, Lastawaka, just inserting random letters. Last last Lastawaka, like Konar, people used to even say before that was a wow. before Connor Oberst, uh, you know, normalized it for everybody. But I am um, w- when I used to do phone, I was a. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this is, I think is a new job. I was a collection agent for a while. Or phone collections, you know, uh-huh. your your bill is overdue. You you deadbeat, pay us that kind of stuff. <laughs> Seems like the least effective way to get that to work. By the way, it wasn't how we did it. Anyway, the uh, I would you had to say by law you have to say your actual name. You can't be like, you know, this is a Mad Dog here. You know, sure. like, which I wanted to, of course. Right. Uh, but so I had to say Michael Nelson by law. And then everyone would go, Mike O'Nelson? I'm like, I don't, it's not an Irish name. <laughs> I've never heard of the O'Nelsons. They probably thought that was like, you know, uh, you know, the, uh, like if you're a cop, you have to tell me. If, if they misheard your name, then that's, you know, a, a, they read it, it on, count. you know, Reddit slash Sovereign Citizen to get out of, uh, yes. drop serve, drop serve. <laughs> Anyway, all right. What do we? Well, there's all sorts of ways to get out of uh, petty lawsuits and and uh, money you owe people. We'll we'll talk about that on our sub podcast on the Patreon. But uh, we're here today uh, to announce our thirtieth book that we're reading on here, the Dirty Thirty. And that's uh, just a stark number. I I guess if you really counted how many actual books, it might be still in the low single digits if you combined all these into you know an actual work of art and added them up. You want to hear a sad thing is um, I was looking back through the files. We just have them all in a file. And I was trying to find the new book. Mm-hmm. And I came across The Eye of Argon. And, and I oh, went, man, what is that? Oh, come on. I know. Well, it just took me a second. You know, you if you just said think of it as... if it was Jim Tice, it had been, Tice. oh, The Eye of Argon. Right. But it was that <laughs> it was that way where I was like, you know, there's a lot of weird titles that we've done. So it just took me a second. Right. I was ashamed and, you know, is all I'm saying. Yeah, the Eye of Argon, as I recall, didn't factor too prominently into the story. There were, you know, uh, rat skulls and rat sluts skulls. and, uh, you know, yes. Rigners. So, like, you know, I think the Eye of Argon was sort of the MacGuffin of the whole it thing. Was a, it was a MacGuffin, yes. <laughs> anyway. But we do. We have a very exciting book to discuss. We have a, uh, a, 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 a great introduction plan to get everybody up to speed on it. But I asked you if you had anything else to discuss um, sort of before we got into there to, to, to pad this out and make it worth everyone's while. And, and you said you did head of a story. You weren't certain if you'd told it to me before and I had well, to verify it, which is shocking once you hear what it's all about. It's probably, I don't know. It's probably come up and maybe in passing, I've said, I've got to tell you this story. Sometimes. <laughs> so maybe this is the completion. If I've told it before, sorry, we're at 30th book people, 30th yeah, book. Right. So we've got a lot to talk about. You can always find the guy who's like, book discussion begins at 2317. <laughs> sure. And skipped ahead to it if this is something we've already discussed. Uh, no, it was just that uh, I was telling someone this story when I was I was up at a big family gathering this weekend. And someone uh, I said something about a missing digit. So warning, this is about, <laughs> what is that called? <laughs> Oh, I was. I, I told about how my friend got degloved in high school. Ah, uh, his yeah. ring. Anyway, so then I was like, and then oh, we're telling finger stories. They're so like, no, we're not really. And I'm like, no, we are. <laughs> we are. <laughs> my dad uh, was missing a finger from that, like his. Yes, uh, so. that's what people are like. Well, we had that on like you know two to one odds. That was. Um, but I was a kid and. You know, my dad had a set schedule. He worked and he'd be home, you know, you'd hear him coming through the door and he'd set his lunch pail down like, yep, that's about time. He was home. I got home from school and he was sitting at the kitchen table, probably having a beer. I mean, I hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a big like cartoon thing on his finger, Uh. (laughs) like a, you know, like a wadded, just a giant. After you hit your thumb with a nail, yeah, then you have to get it with a hammer. Yes. Some sort of cartoon doctor puts that on for you. So he had that on. I'm like. What do you, what's that? What, wh- why are you home? And he's like, cut my finger off. I'm like, <laughs> and I, I laughed and ran. Happy upstairs. birthday, son. <laughs> yeah. 
because I thought that's an odd joke for him to come home early, do the cartoon Band-Aid thing and say that he cut his finger off. So anyway, it comes out. Here's the story. He was a, uh, he installed, uh, he did industrial well drilling. So like okay. for the town, you know, like for, for an yeah. entire town, the well that brings the water to everyone. Okay. So he was doing some sort. So it's kind of like oil drilling a little bit, if you want to picture it. Right, you know, a giant scale. Yeah, it's not a cartoon the well with a bucket. another one. The boy and falls do, down. Yeah. The chains and stuff like that. <laughs> so he's doing that, and he heard a snap, and both of his hands were like inside the pipe doing something, and he heard the snap above him, and he went like this. The only thing that he didn't get out of the way was his finger, his finger here. Uh, index? Yeah. So... That's a, that's that's the finger. Yeah, it's the not finger. the finger. It's not the finger. You, you know, you know, but it's like the. You know, it's number yeah, one. It was very une- ineffectual when he would try to. You know, you. <laughs> Ooh, who are you, where is that pointing? <laughs> anyway, so that happens. Like you know, he's doing. The, he's stopping the the bleeding. This is the part of the story that you might want to just get ready in case you're squeamish. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry to, to have to report this, but this is what he told me. Oh, my God. It started so, crawling toward him. So he, he gets the, the bleeding mostly stopped, and he goes into old Doc McDonald. Doc right. McDonald, who delivered all of us boys and was just the family <laughs> family doctor. I'm just picturing a white coat and, you know, half glasses. And, hey, Al, what's... Oh, you chopped your finger off. So Doc McDonald says, Al, he takes a look at it, he's like, it's not a clean, the bone's not clean. we got to clean the bone off. God. So he, Doc McDonald says, put your arm on the examination table. And Doc McDonald mounts the examination table and uh, puts his knees on my dad's oh, arm. Sawbone style? like, And grabs a pair of clippers and begins <laughs> clipping the ends of the bone off. <laughs> and, and the pieces of bone are hitting my dad in the face. <laughs> And he's hearing the snip. Did he give him a shot of whiskey or something? No, like, he had is, to, we got to do it now, Al. You know, we got to do it. Well, this is the, the, the mid-70s, a man. right? Like, this is, <laughs> this is there's not uh, no, this Matthew. Was, oh, was I forgot to tell you. Yeah, I was a Civil War pictures of it. Like, <laughs> Yes. Oh. It just had to be done now. So they, they got it done. And, you know, I think there was an implication from the doctor, like, psh. Come on, man up. Just get put your arm on the table. <laughs> what are you being squeamish about? <laughs> That's in the uh, le- lesser sided parts of the uh, Hippocratic Oath is the uh, the man up clause. <laughs> yes. Shake oh, my off. God. Shake it off. Anyway, that's my dad. So then forever he just had, it healed over and he had kind of a, so he had some finger, you know. Some finger. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yes. <laughs> anyway, there you go. But so, yeah, if you ever then, you know, were out, uh, you know, playing stickball and got a splinter, you weren't going to get a lot of sympathy when you came home, essentially. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh, I remember the time I, 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 well, I used to get chill blains. Do you know what they're speaking of? Old timey things. I don't. That sounds very old timey. It's where when you get uh, your uh, extremities get cold, you get this accompanying pain, which is almost indescribable. <laughs> People who have it, you will not mistake it for anything else. It feels like you're you're having your toes, you know, hammered with it, like put in a vice and just squeezed. It's unbearable pain. And I have that condition. And my dad one time was like, Dad, my feet really hurt. It's so cold. <laughs> He's like, take the car keys and you can go up and blow the hot air at your little toots. <laughs> like, no, I'll just man it up. Sorry, 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 man. I'll wrap another layer of newspaper on it. <laughs> yeah, so I'll put a, another bread bag over my sock. That sounds like a problem that the disconnect guy could have helped you with, I think. Oh, yeah, that's true. Childhood trauma over chill blains. Your, uh, your discussion of him you know, thinking he was playing a joke is uh, I was down at my parents' uh, house recently, and my dad had this object that you know, he, he would do this for us when we were kids, and then he does it for my sister's you know, five-year-old. He has this rock that he, you know, it looks like you know, if you banged your thumb with a cartoon hammer, he's painted it pink. And he would like hold it up and be like, oh, my thumb. And like, you know, then pull it off. 
And I saw it down there, and it just brought back these memories of him doing that joke. And I was like, where did this come from? And he's like, I was just out, and I saw this rock. And I was like, you, you were out. You saw a rock. It immediately clicked, like, I'm going to take that home. I have the shade of pink that's like, you know, matches my skin tone enough that I will then – just a very odd thing to think about on your day to day. Like this will abuse you know people for the next four decades. <laughs> yes, and, and kids like cartoons from the '30s, right? That have this yeah. little gag in them. <laughs> that looks I mean, like he's... the throbbing lines that come out of a thumb when your <laughs> yes. cartoon thumb hurts. Oh, dads and fingers. Yes, and yes. Um, All right. Well, you can I'm unplug sure that your ears. We're set back. the stage well uh, yes. for what we're about to do. I, I don't. I don't have a proper segue. To that, other than that, I had to go on to our podcast Discord and say, I hate to ask this, but has Mike ever told the story about his father missing a finger before? <laughs> and people were like, it sound, was it the one about the, uh, the log splitter that he borrowed or that he made at oh. home? It, and you were like, no, that's not that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different story. We'll that's tell a... that some other time. <laughs> um, but, so, uh, missing fingers, uh, fake fingers, uh, brings us to book 30, which ever since we sort of discuss the possibility of this book it's been one that the the people in the back have been clamoring for i feel like mm -hmm. and it is a uh you know it, it, a sequel i guess um and, and i don't even know what you'd call it, it it's an eight quill it's uh it's part of a series we've done before and it is the beloved william shatner ron goulart series tech war and we're going to do the eighth book, which is titled, very amusingly, Tech Kill. <laughs> <laughs> and looking back, you know, I think when we found out that there was all these more books in the series, that one stood out to us before. The other books in the series have some ridiculous names as well. Uh, just like looking at the list of them. But Tech War was the story of Jake Cardigan, the detective who like woke up from uh, some sort of suspended animation and uh, had to solve a, a mystery of, of, of who was going to be distributing tech in this uh, society. What, what else do you remember about this, this book? Uh, wasn't there, um, like all future things, wasn't there like a drug that was just a, you know, a program, an app? I, th I think that it's, I think that is what the tech is. Tech. And that's and like you... some sort of VR thing you jack into or something. Yes. Right? Yeah, and he got, the, our hero got hooked on it. Yeah. But now so he's he's clean, man. He got straight, I think, with the help of Gomez, his partner, whose hair looked like it was moving. Do you remember that weird detail? I don't remember. And, that. and then there was the uh, the super hot uh, Beth Kitteridge. Oh, Beth there, Kitteridge, yes. There was like a, a a cyborg version of her too, I think. Yes. Um, and then there was the other thing I remember is for four fifths of the book, maybe closer to like nine tenths. They talked about two guys named Bennett Sands and Sonny Hakori. Yes, yes. And there was like meetings about them. You kept you talking about it. And then they finally like got it. You actually met them and they were both killed within like two pages of being yes. introduced. It was oh, incredible. Yeah, that, it was that incredible. That was the best. <laughs> and then uh, Clumsy Portmanteaus is the other thing that I remember. Most oh, of my. Yeah. Yeah. Plaz. I'm looking Plaz. At, yeah. And all that jazz. I, um, I sneaked a peek ahead and I already see one that I'm like. What is it? Is that a kind of drug? Oh, okay. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> two things mashed together. Got it. Nice. But I figured uh, since it's madness, like no self-respecting podcast would ever leap in uh, to a series like eight books in and expect people to know what was going on, like we did with the Quilters push back, um, which also involved drug dealing. Um, so I don't know if there's interstates in the tech war universe, but we should take a look, uh, a recap of like the tech war series up to this point so that people can be on the same page going into there. Yeah, that's fair. And the best way to do that, I think, is to just read everybody random like excerpts from each each tech war book um, up until tech kill. Mm -hmm. These are just things that we went through, picked out things that sounded ridiculous, and we're going to share them now. Um, the seven books leading up to Tech Kill. The first one with the title. I feel like the titles, it's not quite off the rails yet. No. That's like, okay, there's only so many words. There's probably a little, you know, the refrigerator magnets of tech. <laughs> what? Tech. <laughs> tech egg? No, that doesn't work. <laughs> tech lords. Okay. Book seemed, two. Seemed okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, should I just read an excerpt from that? Sure, we can alternate. Okay. Jake fired again, but missed the dodging cyborg he'd been aiming at. The third cyborg fired his Lays pistol hand. That's the one, you know, it's like Laz Pistol? Yeah, okay. Ask your it. doctor about Laz Pistol. <laughs> Lays pistol. The beam missed Jake by about two feet, but succeeded in cutting off the cylindrical head of the cleanup. It says got, but I assume that's bot. Oh, yeah, probably. The head, spewing circuitry, colored wires, and shards of plastic glass, fell down into the robot's open chest. We're going to get you, called one of the black clad assassins. <laughs> How old are you, black clad assassins? There's a nine year old kid under the uh, black yeah. clad. Yeah. We're going to get you. <laughs> Soon now, said someone else. I don't know who that is. A smooth purring sound grew audible directly above. Jake was concentrating on the two men who were stalking him and didn't look up. Then a sizzling beam of crimson light came slicing down slantwise. When the remaining assassin saw the two chunks of his associates slapped to the ground, splashing blood and innards, he yelled, What would you yell? <laughs> he yelled, Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> spinning on his heel shaking violently he started to run wow so we, we missed mean, a lot there in tech lords that sounds yeah good. that's you know cyborg las pistol hands of black cloud yeah. assassins that's uh what splashing do you splashing blood and innards yeah. yeah that he gets like a mortal combat fatality there that's uh that's 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 what I would yell. I would react like Seth Rogen, you know, in a uh, in a comedy movie from the early aughts. Um, oh, let's get out of here. <laughs> uh, the next one is called Tech Lab, uh, which is very amusing to me. In my high school, your senior year, you had to do a Tech Lab. Yes, it was like there was like fifteen different things you could do: biology or CAD, and I did video tech, so we got to make movies. So mm -hmm. it's very funny to see Tech Lab as the a major science fiction concept. Um, this one uh, begins with Gomez, uh, the, uh, the moving-haired assistant. Gomez, moving, moving away from his fellow carolers, sidled over to the young Chinese. Uh, <laughs> Grandpa Goulart. Uh, <laughs> Spare a few francs for a worthy cause, he inquired, holding out his palm. Do a swift, do a swift scramola, buddy, advised the informant. I'm glad my disguise is foolproof, Gomez set down the drum. Pretend to be forking over a charitable combination. Shit, Gomez, you're seventeen. You're seven minutes and thirteen seconds late. Is Doctor Dannenberg on board the train? Yeah, the quiff got here alone twelve minutes ago. So we've got old timey slang. We've got impenetrable, perhaps future slang, and we've got uh, needlessly specific intervals of time. What more can you ask for from a three seventy two book? Don't you feel like? Um... What's the the little the kid from uh, Encyclopedia Brown the the mean guy? Oh, Bugs Meaty. Bugs. Yeah. I was going to say Buddy. <laughs> Bugs Meaty. Yeah. Do a swift scramola, buddy. Yeah. Hey. That is bizarre. The robot pimp was like a laser gun. It was always jammed when you need it. I, I don't know. It's... The quiff got here alone. I don't. You don't. Ah, you, okay. you hate to put that into a search engine. I don't know. All right. Uh, the next one in the series is called, uh, now they're starting to get desperate, <laughs> Tech Vengeance. Yeah. The other one's like Tech War. I don't know, maybe just because you've seen it so much. It seems like it works well together. Like there's a war, there's for tech, but yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like, the, yeah, I'm looking ahead. There are some good portmanteaus. Here we go. <laughs> the office building across the way had most of its upper walls missing. Draped from two rusted girders was a glow banner <laughs> proclaiming sex in town. Which I think is like an album from 1979. But... Oh, yeah. Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah. Next to it stood a gambling casino whose windows had long since been replaced with plaz tarps <laughs> and large sheets of corrugated metal. Cormet. In the dusty roadway alongside the landing lot, two dozen or so citizens were watching a dog fight and betting on the outcome. <laughs> I'm glad those survive into the future. It's yeah. not even a robo dog or a you know. No, people are very positive about those, right? <laughs> they were only a half block away from the lot when the Crimson Sky Van, Crimson Sky Van, sorry, dropped down to land in the dusty road ahead of them. The door to the drive side popped open, and a lean youth stumbled out. He wore glow pants, so he's from the '90s, and an animated shirt that showed naked women dancing. 
Around his neck hung an electro knife on a golden chain. His shaved head was a mixture of tattooed snake designs and recent scabs. Oh, man. Hey, scum, he yelled. (laughs) Sorry, I, I, I didn't pick that up until it was over. Hey, scum, he yelled. Gomez halted. Could this lout be addressing us, do you think? Jake stopped. That wouldn't be very smart of him. Man, that one has everything. Wow, scabby head. Sex in town? Sex in town. That's like a, uh, you know, you'd see that if you were, you know, in, in Bangkok, maybe. <laughs> um, but then the uh, Plaz Tart manufacturer has got to be like, yeah, I'm working in the exciting Plaz industry. Like, uh, uh, oh, what do you make? Like, you know, uh, those uh, high-tech Plaz cars? Or, no, I make Plaz Tarps. <laughs> You, 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 you throw them over your wood pile to uh, make sure that spiders don't get into it. We got a line, too, that's for uh, painters and sanders. Uh, <laughs> you just kind of like a drop cloth, but we call them plaz tarps. You just peel them open. They're completely disposable. Oh, so like yeah. a, a, a tarp. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, glow pants and animated shirts that show naked women dancing. I'm imagining, you know, a, uh, a 90s internet gif, just like three frames of like... <laughs> Oh, recent scabs. That's a hmm. great one. Very I mean, amazing. I guess in, in a certain sense, all scabs are, if they're not recent, something much worse. Sure, happening. they're not scars. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So that was the fourth book. That brings us to Tech Secret, which was a uh, you know brand of popcorn, I think, um, or a, a store at the mall. Uh, a gust of wind came rushing uphill, grabbing up several of the plasta blossoms. From the base of the knight's pedestal, a few hundred yards downhill from him, a priest stood praying beside a grave that was watched over by a huge projection of a praying wide-winged angel. The priest wore a black robe and cowl and had on black gloves. He was fingering a dangling string of glittering metallic rosary beads. Another strong gust of wind swept through the cemetery, catching at the skirt of the priest's robe and lifting it. Beneath the robe was a bright chrome-plated leg. Frowning, Jake slowed his pace. Maybe that guy's just got a metal leg, he said to himself. But maybe he's a robot pretending to be a priest. Our hero, the detective. (laughs) Casually, Jake reached inside his jacket and rested his palm on the butt of his holstered stun gun. Just then, all the monuments vanished. Someone had clicked off the projection system, and Jake was now standing in the middle of an immense blank field of grass with the dubious priest. (laughs) Jake dived to the ground, stretching out flat. As he settled into the wet grass, the robot yanked out a laser gun and fired. The sizzling beam sliced a rut across a stretch of ground less than five feet from Jake's left side. Man. Wow. It's hot lays gun action in both of these slicing beams and uh smooth purring sounds sizzling beams it's great i mean if you create a world if your world building includes robot pimps it has to include robot priests right it's the you, duality yeah. you can't uh you can't I, have one. in the first i i opened up tech lords and i think tech lab and then tech vengeance and i searched for pimp in all of them pimp was in the first two, and then it wasn't in the in the third one. Oh, so, and it wasn't true. a robot pimp. It was unfortunately just the uh, just a regular garden variety type. Yeah, recent scabs or <laughs> no? Um, Lay's gun versus Lay's pistol. Any idea? Oh, was it a Lay's pistol in the first one? It, it was. was. Uh, I'm just thinking that they didn't really have a Bible a series Bible for these books, and Goulart was kind of just uh, what was it? The Lay's pistol? I don't know. The check cleared. So, what do I care? Plaz pistol. The editor will catch it. Who cares? Uh, okay, the next one is called. Um, wow, this one I'm trying to tech power. Yeah. Which again, I think was a uh, a '90s band. One of those. You know, I've where, got the tech power. <laughs> one of those where a producer assembles them. I've got the song. I'll just name you. I've already got the name. Yeah. Tech. You guys are tech power. And we will get someone much more attractive than you to appear in the video lip sync. Yes. That's... <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Tech power. Gomez the gumshoe said Carla disdainfully. Yes. Wow. Yes, play the hits. Low life peeper, disgraced flat foot. Glad that term stays around. <laughs> Unscrupulous snoop. Who? 
coming from the executive editor of Gossip Digest, that remark, right, you're the you're the do doink. Ink. Sorry, sorry, doink. Yeah, the doink who helped get my <laughs> doink. <laughs> helped get my great friend Bennett Sands killed, she went on. Wow, wow he makes an appearance in, what is this, book six? Book seven, I think. Seven? Or eight, yeah. It's wow. A, uh, I'm glad that thread uh, maintains. And only a few weeks ago, lear- learning up? Uh, oh. Teaming up? I don't know. These might have been, I just I, okay. I grabbed right. from Sorry. the Amazon previews. So. Okay. Uh, learning up with that flat-chested Shrike Natalie Dent from our hated rival. News you caused enormous grief for a dedicated psychiatrist named. This is going to make the cordial conversation I had in mind somewhat scram, she suggested. The black man offered. What? Uh, uh, remember, he did, he did weird things. Like, he would have the... Like this one, the black man offered and then says what he's going to say. And there would be like weird interjections in the middle of sentences. Do you yes, remember that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So wow. it's just, it's, it's Goulart's technique. Uh, please no one isolate what I just read and then like put it on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> the black man offered, I can toss him out in a zero car. Let, no, we'll simply move elsewhere. Giving him one more glowering glance, she walked away from Gomez. If he follows too closely on my heels, if he so much as breathes on me for the rest of the evening, then you can muss him up, Norm. Gomez remained in place, watching the four of them depart. I'm not, he told himself, getting off to a very good start here. That's what I was talking about, that last sentence. (laughs) Wow, looking at the camera. Basic rules of, uh, of of writing, I feel like. It just it was deeply annoying. I forgot about that. that part of it, yeah. Flat-chested Shrike? Is that a... Uh, that seems like something from your, uh, you know, Playboy book of old-timey insults or something. I've, I've never heard that before in my life. A bird? It's a, it's a bird. Uh, so a tiny little uh, sparrow-like bird. Okay. <laughs> So You're a tech- bird. I, I don't know what to make of that. Yeah. And all of those were, were like, you know, sentences that end in M dashes, essentially. So that's, that was the dialogue. Yes, that's tough to read. Each other off. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the, uh, the last one leading up to it. So this is going to firmly establish where you are in the series, whatever, what all has happened. Uh, tech money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Out of ideas at this point in time. More fish, he noticed. The high plastic glass walls of this new corridor were also full of tiny flashing fish. His android guide slowed, pointing. Look, the little purple one just ate a silver one, she said. I find that amusing. They built in a sense of humor along with your linguistic abilities. Barra Gray was a tall, broad-shouldered man in his early 40s. His blonde hair was wavy and long, and he had a checkered cloth napkin tied around his thick neck. I see they programmed you, too. How's that? Oh, nothing. A little android humor. I'm human, I assure you, although some of the staff think I've got gears inside me instead of organs. He gestured at a chair and sat down again. I was having a little lunch. Too busy to get out today. Join me? No, thanks. We have an excellent galley on this floor. I saw to that. I can have them send in some enchiladas or tamales. Actually, I eat only Hungarian food. He settled into the indicated chair. How's that? Oh, I see. More humor. That's the kind of humor that works really well is after the fact when you go, why are you annoying me with this garbage? Oh, I see. That's humor. That's the kind that works the best. He did say uh, the little purple fish eating the silver one. I find that amusing. Uh I mean, you know, it's not vacuum cleaner with a face on it amusing, but (laughs) it's pretty Uh... funny. Every time I see a purple fish eat a silver one, I smile. I smile. <laughs> I mean, if that doesn't whet your appetite for tech kill, I don't know what will. It's got the hits. It's got new plaz constructions. It has uh, our, our, our familiar characters. It has new characters. It has robots, androids. And I think <laughs> humor. Hey, lots of humor. And don't you think, you know, you're a writer. You have to kind of write your way into something, right? Mm-hmm. Then you suddenly realize what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. You discard, of course. Mm-hmm. This is so many books in. This is going to be really good. 
<laughs> so we're doing you a favor reading later into the series. They've solved all the tech problems, which is a great yes. book too, Tech Problem. Tech Problems. Um, but uh, they've solved them all, and this is going to be the ultimate expression of the tech universe, I think. Yeah, I mean, most series, they you know they peak nine in, in, iterations into it, right? Like Friday the 13th, or, I mean, most series don't even make it that far. So uh, it had to have been doing something, right? Well, Beethoven's ninth. Right? Well, there you go. That's He's like <laughs> the pinnacle, and then like, oh, he dies. So <laughs> did, when did Goulart die? Right after Tech Kill, I assume. Probably, yeah. He probably stuck around for like Tech Shrimp or something. Uh, <laughs> tech Mortgage. <laughs> Tech reverse mortgage. <laughs> I'm Ron Goulart. You can trust me. <laughs> Not my first rodeo, people. Honey, give the man on TV our money. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that this is just like going to be very exciting. It's an actual published book for everyone out there. It's not by Ernest Klein, so you can be excited about that. Um, and uh, maybe someone out there will have read some of these uh, tech money or uh, tech power books and can sort of give us some insight. I remember someone went through... And sort of track down how many iterations Plaz had. And it maintained itself mm -hmm. for a while. And then it sort of started to fade. Like he went really heavy with it in that first book, <laughs> I think. And, and then sort of like narrowed it down. Um, but, you know, as we see, we have Plaz to glass in tech money. So, No, it's going to be good. I'm excited. And, and, you know, is it at the library? Maybe. Or, <laughs> or could you find it? At, I mean, I'm sure half price books, right? There's oh, got to be I like mean... 12 of them just shoved up into one of those. Rats. Every time I've seen a little free library, like odds are 50-50 that it has a copy of Digital Fortress by Dan Brown in yes. it. So, I mean, if you can't find a, a tech war book in one of those, they're, uh, they're doing something wrong. All right. Well, looking forward to it. How many, do we know how many words? Uh, Pretty much the same. 60K, I think. So, okay. That's, you know, yeah. you can compare that. That's what you're going for with like NaNoWriMo or, uh, you know, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So we can expect something uh, of some similar caliber, I'm sure. Yeah. To yeah. NaNoWriMo, not, not so much hitchhikers. <laughs> right. All right, great. Tech kill, everyone. Tech kill. <laughs>